So we're given this quadratic, and then we're going to have a list of things we're going to find. Um, first thing is the x-intercepts. Those are where it's equal to zero. So we're going to take one option is factoring. You might want to use the quadratic formula. You could use your calculator. Um, let's go ahead and factor this one. I know it's going to have to be 2x and x. And now I think about my factors of 12. I've got 1 and 12. Uh, 3 and 4 and 2 and 6. It's got to be one pair of those and then their product slash difference needs to come out to be 5. Difference because these are going to have opposite signs. So I start to check. Well 6 times 2 is 12 minus 2 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. The, the 2 is coming from right here when I'm saying 2 times. And so it looks like 4 and 3 is going to be the option we want to go with. And it worked when I had the, the 2 times the 4, which means the 3 has to be here. So that gives me an 8x and a 3x, the difference of which is 5x. I want it to be a positive 5x, so I need a positive 8x and a negative 3x, and there are my factors. Setting each of these equal to 0 and solving gives us our zeros. And so we're going to have two of them. This one's going to solve out to 3 halves. So x equals 3 halves. And this one's going to solve out to negative 4. The y-intercept is when we put in 0 for x. So we're going to get 0 plus 0 minus 12. So the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 12. Or for this particular problem, if you write it in as y equals negative 12, that that works as well. The domain of a quadratic. If we're not in any context, the domain of a quadratic is always going to be all reals, but we want to use interval notation, so we write it as negative infinity to infinity. The next uh, few pr questions are all going to be based off the same information, so I'm going to go ahead and move down and I'll rewrite the uh, quadratic here. So we had f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. So we need to find the range. We're going to have to find where it's increasing, decreasing. It's vertex, it's axis, symmetry, and we're going to make, be making a graph. So all this stuff is based on the same thing. Um, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and find the vertex now. So the vertex, the x-coordinate, has that fancy little formula minus b over 2a. You could also graph it and get your vertex, but this will always be exact. So negative 5 over 2 times 2, B, A. So negative 5 fourths. Now, a couple different ways if we want to, we got to find the uh, Y coordinate, because I'm going to do the vertex and I'm going to kind of work backwards. So let's go ahead and bring in our calculator. I want to show you something with this. If we decide to calculate this, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to put it in parentheses squared plus 5 times negative 5, 5 divided by 4 minus 12. So you could use your calculator. You could do this by hand too. I'm just giving you some options. Now because I have the x coordinate in a fraction, I may want this in a fraction too. So what I'm going to do, let me show you this. If I go to math, fraction, it puts that answer in as a fraction. So now we have our vertex. It was negative 5 fourths comma negative 121 over 8. That's going to be used in our range. It's either going to be the upper bound or the lower bound. We can tell right now because if we look at our quadratic, it opens upwards. <clears throat> so it goes from the vertex up. So if I were to graph it, I would graph this vertex, which is right around negative 1 and right around negative 15, so unfortunately it doesn't quite fit on our axes here, but let's put it right there. There's our vertex. Vertex is negative 5 fourths comma negative 121 over 8. We had a y-intercept of negative 12. Again, it doesn't quite fit, but it's going to be right about there, and then these things are symmetry, symmetric. And we know we have x-intercepts of negative 4 and 3 halves. So we should hit about right there and right there. Now I'm drawing it first because I want you to see the range. Notice it goes from the vertex up. 
So it goes from negative 121 over 8 up. So when I go back to fill in my range, I know it goes from negative 121 over 8 to positive infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. There's never a question there. For range, we want to include this number so it gets a bracket. We have all the information to answer all the rest of these questions actually pretty quickly. And I'll kind of go back and forth so you can see. But it, the next question is, where is it increasing? Well, we see clearly from the graph that it's increasing on this right-hand side. And we only use the x-coordinates. So it's going to increase from negative 5 fourths up to positive infinity. And we just use a parenthesis there. We never use brackets for increasing and decreasing because that negative 5 fourths is where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So we'll always have a parenthesis there. You can kind of tell from where it's increasing where it's decreasing because it's just decreasing over here on the other side. So negative infinity to negative 5 fourths is our decreasing interval. The axis of symmetry we've actually already found, too, because that's that vertical line that cuts this guy in half. Well, notice it goes right through our vertex. So the axis of symmetry is an equation, so you do need x equals. It's just the x-coordinate of your vertex, x or whatever variable your function's in terms of. We have to write one of the alternative forms, factored form or vertex form. Well, we actually already have it in factored form here. That we did that to find the zero, so I'm just going to use that. I'll also write it in vertex form for the uh, answer key. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 4. And then the way we could write it in uh, vertex form very quickly is the a is the same from vertex form, so it's still the 2, and then it's x minus the x-coordinate, because it's basically a horizontal shift of the vertex, excuse me. So x minus a negative 5 fourths squared. Don't forget the square. I see that happen a lot. People forget the square on it. It's quadratic. We need that square in there. Plus the y-coordinate of the vertex, so plus a negative 121 over 8. And I'm going to take one step of simplification. So 2 times x plus 5 fourths squared minus 121 over 8. Because what it is, is we already have the vertex, so we don't have to go through completing the square on this thing. We can just take the vertex and use it to set up the vertex form. So there's our factored form, there's our vertex form.